You are listening to an excerpt from Collapsible, a novel of friendship, broken bones, coffee, shenanigans, and the occasional murder. Read by Ruth Buchanan. Chapter 1 Rachel's total life implosion came about in this way. One Wednesday morning in early April, she tripped and broke her ankle. She didn't remember falling. One minute she'd been rushing to finish her drill on the agility ladder, and the next she was going down hard. Her scream covered the sound of the snapping bone, a sickening little snick, and she found herself lying flat on her back on the gym mats, right leg elevated, foot lolling strangely. Somehow her foot had looped through the ladder on the way down, and now she rolled on the floor in a snarl of straps and plastic rungs. This couldn't be happening. Coach Donovan whooped. Then there he was, dropping down beside her so close that she could feel the heat radiating off him. One of his giant hands cupped her calf to stabilize her leg, while the other hovered in the air, poised to intercede if necessary. I think I'm hurt, Rachel said, alarmed to hear her voice wobbling strangely. Not that her ankle actually hurt, though. Not exactly. It just felt wrong somehow. The buzzer went off across the room to signal the end of the final round. If she were to have even a prayer of showering and getting into her classroom before her student showed up, she needed to pack her gym bag and jump into the car immediately. Instead, she lay writhing on the floor at the gym, tangled in the agility ladder, leg cradled awkwardly by her coach, heart still hammering from the final cardio push. Rachel turned her head to the side and saw a set of feet approaching. She looked up and beheld her sister's face, dripping sweat. What happened to you? Anne asked. She rolled her ankle, Donovan said. Rachel felt thankful that she and Anne worked out with Donovan privately, instead of as part of his workout classes. This scenario was embarrassing enough with only two witnesses. Rachel winced as the pads of Donovan's fingers pressed against her foot to keep it from listing to starboard. She blinked through the mist and reached a hand to swipe back gobs of clumpy red hair from her forehead. I hope it isn't sprained, she moaned. Anne grunted dispassionately, using her teeth to pull away the hook and loop strips of her boxing gloves. She pulled off the gloves and swiped her forearms across her face. She leaned down to take a closer look at Rachel's ankle. Yikes. Anne, Rachel gasped, do something. Although what exactly she wanted her sister to do, she wasn't sure. There are cold backs in the mini fridge in the office, Donovan said. Anne jogged away, and Donovan tightened his hands around Rachel's leg. He narrowed his eyes. Lie still. Rachel curled an arm over her eyes. This is the worst, she moaned. She could feel her heartbeat everywhere, behind her eyeballs, down her legs, through her toes, and in the tips of her fingers. Let go of my foot for a minute. Cautiously, she rotated her elevated foot in tiny spirals, breathing a sigh of relief when it moved. Surely if she could move it, it couldn't be too badly hurt. Anne reappeared, threaded her arm around Donovan's, and pressed an ice pack against the quickly swelling ankle. I think it's okay, Rachel said, ignoring the looks that Donovan and Anne gave her. She looked away and concentrated on keeping her breathing even. Let me see if I can stand. You have to get untangled first, Anne said. She squatted and began to tug at the straps to the agility ladder. Scoot your hips up, she told Rachel. Donovan shook his head. I don't know, Rachel. If your ankle's broken, you could do some real damage trying to walk. He moved the flat of his hand against the sole of her foot to provide further stability. Just stay put for a few minutes until we see if I'm fine. As Rachel struggled up to her elbows, her arms trembled beneath her. It's not broken. Her sore abs convulsed in protest and she subsided against the mats, panting slightly. Anne worked the rest of the ladder free and pulled it off to the side, straightening it out neatly before coming back to stand over her sister, hands on hips. You should still have an x-ray, Anne said, frowning. There's a walk-in clinic down the road. Donovan squatted back on his heels, but it'll be closed at this hour. I don't need it, I'm fine. So, Donovan said to Anne, ignoring Rachel completely. X-rays? Donovan scooped his arms under Rachel, lifting her. She could no more have stopped herself from squawking than she could have reversed the flow of time. This was to remain etched in her memory as one of the least dignified moments of her life. Given Rachel's life, that was saying something. The sweep of early morning air felt divine against Rachel's clammy face. Heavy with humidity as it was, It still felt blessedly cool when compared with the swampy atmosphere inside the gym. 
She closed her eyes and savored a moment of stillness as she is and Donovan waited for Anne to pull the truck around. Donovan hitched Rachel higher against his perfect chest and she felt herself blushing. Had this been a romance novel, one of her arms would have been flung around Donovan's neck while the other would have rested against his strong chest. Instead, Rachel's arms had been near her sides when he picked her up and now they lay folded over her stomach. One of her shoulders dug into his chest. In a book, of course, Donovan would not have been so sweaty and Rachel would have been less frazzled. Her hair would not have been this angry shade of red, nor would her cheeks have been so splotchy. She prayed Anne would hurry up with the truck or for a crack in the sidewalk to open and swallow her completely, putting an end to this humiliating experience. We hope you enjoyed this excerpt of Collapsible, a novel of friendship, broken bones, coffee, shenanigans, and the occasional murder by Ruth Buchanan. Available now from Pelican Book Group, www.pelicanbookgroup.com.